First question, what inspired you, motivated you to write? Uh, there's a short version to this question and a long version. I'll give you the short version. It was 2006 and I was in my second year of university. My sister was in her first and um, we were going to go Christmas shopping uh, near her school because a new mall had opened up. And uh, I had been up until 2 a.m. the night before working on a paper because we were heading into exams and final assignments and things like that. And when she came into my room and asked me, are we going? I said, no, I'm uh, too tired, but we'll go another day. About an hour or so later, um, my dad called and said, your sister's been in a car accident. And at the time I didn't think, I didn't think much of it because I had just been in a fender, a fender bender the month before and he wasn't really too um, specific with what had happened until he called again. And I said, what happened? And uh, he said she got T-boned by a dump truck. Um, it didn't really hit me the consequences of what could have happened until I saw the car, which was a van, actually. And uh, from 100 meters away, I could see it. And it was like the skeleton of the car that it used to be and I felt guilty that I hadn't been in the car with her and I think the worst game that I began to play was the what if one and it wasn't until 10 months later where I just kind of said there's this world that I'm creating there are these characters Jesse Knight and Natalie Parker who are on my mind and there's a story here and each each dream or each nightmare was kind of creating this story and um, I guess I used it as a way to just put down my thoughts and emotions and the protector and the world the, um, of the protector was created. Who are your greatest influences and favorite authors? I, you know, greatest influencer I would say is J.K. Rowling. And I know that seems like it's a cliche answer, but it is. She, she wrote Harry Potter at a time in her life when things weren't great. And she created this world that billions of people love. She created The Boy Who Lived. She created Hogwarts. She created magic. Um, so I think the influencer of her and what she kind of offers to those people who pick up her, her books is just so amazing. Uh, she created this world. And if an author can give you a sense of escape for an hour or two or for however long you elect to read the book and make you forget everything that you do or everything that's going wrong in life, then, then they've written a good book. They are a great author. They are a fantastic storyteller. So I would say she is an influencer. As far as authors go, I, I don't think I have a favorite author. I think I have authors who have written some of my favorite stories. Um, I loved reading Jojo Moyes' Me Before You. Um, I think I started that book at 11 p.m. one night and I was up till 4 or 5 in the morning reading it because it was so good. Because it, it pulled me in and I, I was falling in love with the story and, and, and these characters and I felt invested in it. Um, I look at Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice and Emma. Jane Austen wrote a formula that a lot of authors, female authors, um, or authors in general in this case, use. She created a, 
a strong, opinionated character in Elizabeth Bennet. She created Mr. Darcy, who was challenged and engaged by her. And the the tension and the animosity between the two characters is is what is written in a lot of romance novels. And you'll find, I think, some of that formula in Jesse and Natalie because he has his own way of thinking and what he believes and she has her own way of of dealing with consequences and how things should be done. So I think Jane Austen wrote one of the best formulas, but I can easily say that Shakespeare wrote amazing stuff because that's without question, but I love The Taming of the Shrew and I love The Merchant of Venice. So I, I think I'm a person who likes the author for the story that they write. Um, and I've, I've read a lot of books in, in my life and there's so many other stories that I could name, but I, I just don't think I'd have too much time to, to, to list them all. Um, next question. How much of yourself is in the characters and is there one in particular? I'll answer the second part of the question first. Is there one character in particular that is just like me? No. Um, simple as that. Uh, I don't think I really put too much of myself to say, yes, this character is me to a T. I would say that there are elements of who I am in each character. Um, I look at someone like Natalie. Natalie is a writer in my book, so am I. Granted, I made her a children's book writer, but that's who she is um, to me. Uh, you know, that's a part of me that's in her, being the older sister. That's also me. Um, making her shy and timid to a certain extent. Um, not me, but I can be shy in certain situations. I am an introvert. My friends may not believe me because I curl, um, but I am someone who really likes to stay in versus going out. And that's, I think, what I bring for Natalie in the character. Jesse, um, I, I view both of, both Jesse and Natalie as my kids. So um, Jesse has my quick wit, um, sarcasm, just... Um, the way that he delivers lines, um, it, that's me, uh, that to a, to a letter, um, you know, other characters like Redmond being responsible, no nonsense, there's, there's, and, and a rules person, that's me, um, Edward also being someone who follows the rules, who's very, um, you know, a stickler for that sort of stuff. But I would say there's pieces of me in each character. And I think my friends who have, and family who have read the book would probably be able to, um, pick out certain things better than I ever could. So, um, you would have to definitely ask them which part of me they see in those characters. What's next for you and your writing? Will the series continue? Yes, the series will continue. The Guardian is uh, the next book in the series that I will be writing. And I will be following it up with the final book, The uh, Keeper. Um, so look for those in the next few years. Um, I'll be starting The Guardian shortly, so don't worry. It won't take as long, nearly as long as the Protector did, which was eight years, and two years on the Defender, so I'm hoping um, to write it over the summer. Once you get the third book, it's just, you just gotta write it. Um, and have really good editors who pick up when you miss words and stuff. So, Laura, thank you. Uh, Jess, thank you. Um, gotta, you gotta have them. Um... As far as what's next for my writing, I'll be focusing on those 
two. Um, but I have three other story ideas that um, I've been really wanting to put um, down on paper. Uh, some of them have been around with me for probably the past five or six years. And I think there's the one story that I do want to write. I wrote it as a short story in high school. So I would love to really develop uh, that book uh, and make it make it something. Last question. Ooh, um, how do you deal with writer's block? Um, with the protector, there were a lot of challenges simply because it manifested from my dreams and nightmares and had to write it down and a story kind of unfolded. But then my, my, okay, my process for the, uh, for the protector was I wrote the first eight chapters. I wrote the last six chapters and everything in between the the good part in the Oreo cookie um, like my writing process for it was writing backwards or writing forwards and uh, that was really hard to do simply because I wasn't sure how I wanted it to to lay out and I was writing a book that dealt with time um, I wanted it to make it interesting. I wanted to make it exciting. I wanted to make sure that you weren't going to be bored. So I think with writer's block, my interpretation of it is you're bored with what you're writing and you don't want to write anymore. So at the end of the day, I, I guess I got bored with what I was writing. Nothing was exciting until, you know, you, you wake up one day and like, your eureka moment happens like this is good I gotta write this down so I th I really think for me sometimes with the writer's block helped I took my iPhone had the voice recorder put headphones in and I would talk out the chapter I would play whoever uh, the characters were in that scene and kind of just put the mindset of this is what I want to hear or this is what I would want to be said to me so uh, that's that's what I did. So then it goes back to the other question in terms of um, how much of yourself are in the characters. Um, what I wrote, what I said uh, is something that I would want to hear or I would want somebody to say to me. Uh, with The Defender, I really didn't have writer's block. It was easier to write. I think it was more or less in terms of which way I wanted the story to go. And I think I did an okay job with that. So I hope that answers those questions. Um, please send more if you want to know more about the protector or the defender um, and questions that you have. Leave a comment on the Travelog 219 uh, Facebook page and we'll do another video soon. Thanks.